In this video, we're going to talk about rational expressions. We're going to talk about how to simplify them, how to multiply, divide, and add rational expressions. So let's start with this one. How can we simplify this particular rational expression? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to factor the expression completely and then cancel anything that you could cancel. In the numerator, we can factor out a 7 because 35 and 7x are both divisible by 7. If we divide 35 by 7, we're going to get 5. And if we divide negative 7x by 7, we're going to get negative x. Now, x squared minus 25, what we have there is a difference of perfect squares. When you have the expression a squared minus b squared, you can factor it as follows, a plus b times a minus b. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. So it's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 5. Now, is there anything that we can cancel? Right now, it doesn't appear to be so, but notice what happens if we factor out a negative 1 from 5 minus x. If we take out a negative, the negative x becomes positive x, and the positive 5 becomes negative 5. So now at this point, we can cancel x minus 5. Doing so will give us our simplified answer, which is negative 7 over x plus 5. So that's how we could simplify this particular rational expression. Now let's move on to our next example. In this case, we're multiplying two rational expressions. How can we simplify this whole problem? Well, what we need to do is we need to factor everything. Let's begin with 4x minus 12. We could take out the GCF, which is 4. 4x divided by 4 is x. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. So that's the first thing we can do. Now, we could do something similar with 6x plus 30. The GCF is 6. 6x divided by 6 is x, 30 divided by 6 is 5. Now on the right, we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. So to factor x squared plus 8x plus 15, what we need to do is find two numbers that multiply to 15, but add to the middle coefficient 8. So this is going to be 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15, 5 plus 3 is 8. So we can write this as x plus 5 times x plus 3. And here we have a difference of perfect squares. So if we take the square root of x squared, we're going to get x. If we take the square root of 9, we're going to get 3. One is going to be negative, the other is going to be positive. Now that we factored everything, what we need to do is cancel. We could cancel these two factors, x plus 3. We can also cancel x minus 3 and we can cancel x plus 5. So what we're left over is 4 over 6. But now we can reduce this fraction. 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 2 times 3. So we can also cancel a 2. Thus the final answer for this problem is 2 over 3. Now let's move on to our next problem. That is dividing two rational expressions. So how can we do this? Perhaps you heard of a phrase called keep, change, flip. It allows us to change from a division problem to a multiplication problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the first fraction. We're going to change the sign from division to multiplication, and we're going to flip the second fraction. So let's rewrite the first fraction. Let's keep it the same we have x squared plus 3x minus 10 divided by 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. Now let's change the division sign to multiplication and then we're going to flip the second fraction. So now we have a problem that's similar to the last problem that we just solved. So what we need to do at this point is factor and cancel. 
So let's begin by factoring x squared plus 3x minus 10. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 10, but add to positive 3. What are those two numbers? Well, we know 5 times 2 is 10. But we need to use positive 5 and negative 2 because it adds up to positive 3. So this is going to be x plus 5 times x minus 2. I'm going to save this for later. Now let's focus on factoring that particular trinomial. So we need two numbers that multiply to 6 but add to negative 5. So 2 times 3 is 6, but that adds up to positive 5. So we need to use negative 2 and negative 3. So this is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 3. Now for this one, what we need to do first is take out a 2 because all of the coefficients are even. So before we factor it, we need to take out the GCF. So dividing everything by 2, we're going to have x squared plus 3x minus 18. So now we could focus on factoring this particular trinomial. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 18, but add to positive 3. So 18 is 9 times 2. It's also 6 times 3. But if we use positive 6 and negative 3, this is going to work because these two add up to positive 3. So we still need the 2 in front, but we could factor the trinomial highlighted in blue as x plus 6 times x minus 3. Now let's delete a few things to make extra space. So what we need to do at this point is we need to factor that expression. Note that the leading coefficient is 3, it's not 1. And we can't factor out a 3 from negative 10. So we need to factor this a special way. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. Now we need two numbers that multiply to negative 30, but add to the middle coefficient, 13. So if we divide negative 30 by 1, we'll get negative 30. If we divide it by 2, we'll get negative 15. If we divide it by 3, we'll get negative 10. 4 doesn't go into 30, but we could divide it by 5 and get negative 6. The one that is most promising is 2 and negative 15, because if we reverse the sign, if we use positive 15 and negative 2, it now adds up to positive 13. So we're going to rewrite this expression as 3x squared plus 15x minus 2x minus 10. So basically what I did is I replaced 13x with 15x and negative 2x because 15x minus 2x is still equal to 13x. Now let's factor out the GCF in the first two terms. If we take out 3x we'll be left with x plus 5. Next let's take out the GCF in the last two terms. If we take out negative 2, we'll be left with x plus 5. So now, we need to factor out x plus 5. If we take out x plus 5 from this term, we're left with 3x. If we take it away from this term, we're left with negative 2. So thus, we could factor this trinomial as follows. It's going to be 3x minus 2 times x plus 5. And you could FOIL it. If you FOIL it, you're going to get what you started with. So now, let's simplify our rational expressions. So we could cancel something on top with something on the bottom. In this case, we can cancel the x minus 2 factor. We can also cancel the x plus 5 factor. And we could cancel x minus 3. So what we're left over is 2x, I mean 2 times x plus 6 divided by 3x minus 2. So this is the final answer. Now, let's work on this problem. So here, we want to add two rational expressions. How can we do this? 
what we need to do is we need to get common denominators. I'm going to multiply the second fraction by the other denominator, top and bottom, and then I'm going to multiply the first fraction by the denominator of the second fraction. So right now I have 2x times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 3 and then plus 5 times x plus 3 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 3. So what we can do at this point is we can write this as a single fraction since we now have the same denominators. So it's going to be 2x times x minus 2 plus 5 times x plus 3 divided by the denominator. Now the next thing we could do is simplify what we have on the numerator. So let's distribute. 2 times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. And then we have 5 times x. And then 5 times 3. Now we can combine like terms. Negative 4x plus 5x that's going to be x. So we have 2x squared plus x plus 15 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 3. Now this might be our final answer, but we need to check to see if the trinomial on the numerator can be factored. So let's multiply these two numbers. 2 times 15 is 30. Are there two numbers that multiply to positive 30, but add to the middle coefficient 1? Well, we know the factors of 30. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. None of these will add up to positive 1. In order for it to be positive 30, both numbers have to be either positive or both negative. They have to have the same sign. And so since this cannot be factored, this is as far as we can go in terms of simplifying this expression. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction in terms of the types of problems you'll see when studying rational expressions in algebra.